I've seen yes. so many articles of yeah, like exercise. Oh, the like far right obsession with being in shape. Yeah. Like like it's a bad thing somehow. I don't I don't well, because there's a giant percentage of our population that is really lazy and fat. <laughs> and if you want those people on your team, you have to say there's nothing wrong with being lazy and fat. And in fact, n not being lazy and fat is actually connected to misogyny and racism and, and fascism and the far right. But and I then people are like, oh, great, let's eat donuts and just fucking vote blue. But I feel like lazy and fat is pretty bipartisan. That's why I always joke America's too fat for a civil war. It's not it's not just people on the left who are lazy. I would like to see a breakdown of who like who is the most obese by party. <laughs> well, not just obese but obese and lazy. <laughs> You know because like it's there's a lot of fat people that work really hard. They just eat like crazy and they drink a lot. You know, there's there's you know, humans vary wildly. Of course. And there's a lot of people that are just really fat people that work hard. I just don't think I don't know that like the le do you think they have the the like the the lazy fat population? Well, who's pushing for <laughs> universal basic income? Who's pushing for who's pushing for redistribution of wealth? That's all the people on the left. And the people that are pushing for redistribution of wealth and universal basic income, if they can say that you shouldn't be forced to work and that your needs should be met by a society that has exorbitant wealth and that the way to have a more equitable society is to have these people with exorbitant wealth that, you know, they got this wealth by exploiting the middle class and the lower class and that should be redistributed that that's that's where it becomes an issue because that's all being that that narrative is being pushed by the left almost entirely and that's one of the ways that you could say like if you wanted to reinforce the idea that you know not working hard and not struggling and really like putting in an immense amount of effort in order to succeed and you know pushing this idea this capitalist narrative that you know that all that stuff is in fact negative and that all that stuff is in fact connected to the far right, connected <laughs> to people that want to suppress other people's rights and take away a woman's right to choose and you know all these other different things. Y you could do that far easier by promoting that idea to the left. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about universal basic income either because I don't know enough about it. I do know if, it, I do know some of the studies they've done, people generally, if they are given like a baseline, it doesn't make them lazier. They actually work harder, and they, it's enough to help them pull themselves up out of that. Well, like, Kyle Kalinske talked about this. Mm -hmm. We talked about the Stockton experiment, what they did in Stockton. Yeah. And it's a, a small amount. It's like $500 a month, I believe, but mm -hmm. it had an overall net positive effect. Yeah. And a very, very small amount of that money was spent on things like drugs or right. alcohol, and most of it was spent on rent and food and improving people's education opportunities. It seems like a little bit of money for low income families is a very good thing. Oh yeah, even with the you know the child care money that they were yes. giving out, yes. and then they stopped that. That Super had a huge effects. Fifty percent increase in uh, or, or fifty percent decrease rather in in child uh, malnutrition, poverty, mm -hmm. uh, children not having enough food like 50 percent yeah i don't know why is, they stop that i guess Maybe. probably because they want to keep us at each other's throats <laughs> i mean that the overall net positive that it's like if you can find something that has an overall net positive that seems like that should be that should be talked about on television and we should talk about trying to figure out other ways to implement that in society i agree there's, there's without doubt people in this society that need help and to, to, to say that all those people that need help are lazy is crazy because not people do not start at the same spot on the on the race. No, you know if you have a you have you have a race, the finish line or the starting block is different for different people. Yeah, depending on your where you're born, the neighborhood you live in, the family you're from, and the idea that we can't have a way to sort of balance it. It just it becomes a point and like at what time are you going to stifle people's desire to improve their position because you're going to take away money and de-incentivize people from being successful right that's what people on the right are worried about that's the people that are like hardcore capitalists are worried about yeah and i think there's got to be some middle ground we don't we have social safety nets in yes. america and i don't think people i mean you know enough comedians who are like one freaking injury away from financial ruin I don't think that, like, our health care in this country is a disaster. And, yeah. 
I, it's my been my second largest expense after rent for w- decades, always. Yeah. And now I have a child, and even having a child, and then seeing just the kind of lack of support that there actually is. You know, you get maybe six weeks, and then you're supposed to put your kid in daycare or go back to work when you're just you're barely done. So I feel like there has to be. There's got. I don't want to be so cynical that I'm like, oh, well, I guess it's like we either have this free capitalist society where clearly that will just only try and make money for money's sake. And a lot of people do end up getting left behind or we have this free handouts for everyone and people aren't incentivized to go be small business owners or take risks or go start their own thing and pull themselves up. And, you know, I, I think you and I share the, like, I didn't have the, like, ideal background, and I didn't go to college, and I pulled myself up and made my own way and overcame addiction, so I have a lot of empathy, but I also am like, hey, get your shit together. You know, I know, I know it's possible to pull yourself up and, and, and make something of yourself. And there's a lot of people that don't know how to do that. That's part I think of the it's problem. overwhelming. You yeah. know, when you're stuck in survival, that's why I think something like universal basic income or something like like those the minimum that you can give people, it if it can lift you out of like going from surviving to thriving is something that my therapist and I have talked about for years. But that's a very hard transition to make even when you've been in survival mode forever, you're just how do you yeah, how do you? How do you even envision a different life if you've only known that hustle and and you're there? You feel like you're drowning. And I know how and pretty average middle. I I just know how it feels to feel like you're finally making headway, and then you get hit with a tax bill from the city of Los Angeles, or you get hit with a car repair, or somebody in your family gets injured, and now suddenly you are back to where you started. It's so hard to get ahead. So, yeah, there's got to be... There's so many people who are struggling, and the cost of living is fucking insane right now. Yeah, it's not just uh, financial help. It's, It's also giving people the tools and giving people an understanding of what's required in order to get better Mm -hmm. to to improve your position financial literacy financial literacy (laughs) for sure but also telling people like what you can do in terms of improving your position in life 